This vlog is sponsored by Anchor. This week's vlog is all about Solar. Solar. And if we can get our wonderful assistant to uh, find some sun for us. We literally have a smidgen of sun. It feels so wrong that the solar panels are so light. As yesterday's solar install went so well, we yeah. thought we'd come back today and install the split relay. We would say it is an essential for mm -hmm. any van yeah. build. Hi guys, we are Nick and Sam, and this right here is Lord Onyx. We have been living and traveling in self-built camper vans since 2018, and between us, we have converted four vans. For the past few series, we have been vlogging our van life adventures, which has taken us through Spain, Portugal, Scotland, Norway, and Germany. But if you know anything about van life, a build is always calling. So this time around, Terra will be resting her wheels whilst we take on the challenge of building van number five. Welcome back guys, and this week's vlog is all about solar. solar. We have gone for two times Flexi solar panels. So we bought these panels off Amazon, they're 150 pounds yeah. each, and each one is 150 watts of solar. Yeah, so in total, the van is gonna have 300 watts of solar. The reason we went for flexi panels over non-flexi panels was actually because of the price. And although the price is more for a flexi panel versus a non-flexi panel, you have to consider like the brackets to mount it onto the van. So actually with the brackets and a non-flexi panel, it totaled the same as this. So it just made sense to get this. As you can see, it's so light. So we don't even need to worry about our payload when it comes to our solar either. So that was one of the reasons why we went flexi. The second reason we went flexi as well is the fact that we don't need brackets to hold them down onto the roof. We can just glue it straight in, which means that we won't have bolts going through our roof. So that means less holes, less room for leaking. And I think that's all the reasons why we chose to go flexi. So next up is to test they actually work. For testing guys, if you've never done this before, this one is for you. What you're gonna need is a multimeter and hopefully a little bit of sun. And I think we're in for a bit of luck because today is a very, very sunny December British day. We literally have a smidgen of sun. First things first guys, make sure you find out what the open circuit voltage is for your solar panels as a 21.45. Next up, you wanna grab your multimeter, set it to measure DC voltage. You wanna make sure that the results of your test are within 10% of the open circuit voltage that is on the back of your solar panel. We're setting it to 200 so we can get a more accurate reading. And if we can get our wonderful assistant to uh, find some sun for us. Come here then. No, it's literally gone in as soon as we're ready. <laughs> so now, of course, make sure you connect your positive to the positive MC4 connector and the negative to the negative. And she'll just stand here until the sun comes out. I could yeah. be here hours. So we've just got a reading of 20.5 volts. What does that mean? That means... We're the solar's working! That means we're within 10% of the 21.45. For installing our solar panels, we're going to be using an entry gland some solar extension cable, sticks like to stick down the solar panels to the roof, and of course, Sikaflex 522 to seal down the entry gland. And of course, guys, you can find all the products we use in the description below. <coughs> Couple of things that I missed, guys. Gonna need a drill with bit, grommet, and hammerite paint. Oh, and we want to take a moment to thank today's sponsor, Anchor. We've been using Anchor portable chargers for years, so when we found out they had entered the big boy power bank market, well, we had to get our hands on it and put it to the test. But first, let's tell you why the Anchor 767 powerhouse is game changing. Let's start with the fact it packs some serious power. This has 2,400 watts and 2,048 watt hours of capacity, and you get 3,000 cycles worth of it. I guess that's why they call their range of power banks powerhouses. On top of this, they have included some some really cool features. The smart app energy control so you can use it from your phone. And as this is their largest power bank, the built-in pop-out handle makes it portable. But how do we even charge it? Our favorite way is using the solar panels. But as we live in the UK, the fact that we can also charge it by the 12 volts in our vehicle, as well as by mains, is super useful. And with its hyperflash technology, you only need to wait one and a half hours for it to reach 80% and two hours for it to reach 100%. And for all you tech heads, they haven't stopped there. This is the world's first ultra-efficient GAN powered portable power station. Hey Google, what's GAN? Hi Nick. <laughs> it is a charger which uses gallium nitride instead of silicon. This makes it smaller, more energy efficient and faster charging than a traditional charger. Sounds perfect. Thanks Google. No problem Nick. <laughs> so now, let's put it to the test. As you know, we are building another van. Sometimes we get to use Sam's parents' drive, others we have to go down the street. So today we're going to find out whether this power bank can handle all of our tools and gear. First, the laptop. Next, our tools battery charger. And we'll throw in our camera batteries. And when the camera's off, we do listen to music. So let's 
let's move all of this out the way and test it with our chop saw. The current output for these little gadgets is 66 watts, but let's see what it reaches when we turn the chop saw on. Three, two, one. That wasn't that bad. It said 879. Nine, nine, nine. The fans are kicking in. And that's 1,066. Not gonna lie, I was a little bit worried we were gonna fry our power bank, but it's still alive, so it's gonna be perfect for the rest of our van build. I also think it's gonna be good for those building weekend campers and using it as your electrics as a whole, and maybe for our off-grid land one day. Anyway, guys, to get your hands on an Anchor Powerhouse with a special discount, head to the link in the description below. So here is our wiring diagram. We have wired the panels in series, as this way they charge better in direct sunlight. wrong that the solar panels are so light. First up for installing our solar panels is fixing the entry gland to the roof. What this is is basically a little shelter for the wires to enter the van and prevent water getting in. I'm going to leave the entry gland as it is. I haven't put any Sikaflex on it yet. I'm going to make sure I get all these panels in position, get them all cabled up, then feed the wire through, and then we'll Sikaflex and stick these down. Next up is simply sticking down the solar panels with some sticks like glue. Earlier we put some weight on the entry gland just to help it adhere to the roof of the van. It's been about an hour. All we need to do now is just seal off the edges. Unfortunately, it's the last job of the day because it's getting dark. So I have to say that has been the easiest solar panel installation we have ever done. And I'd say it's down to the fact we picked flexi panels over non-flexi panels because we only had to do two holes in the roof for the entry gland. Whereas a non-flexi panel, you'd have to do about eight holes for the bolts per panel. So yeah, really, really chuffed with how smooth this went. As yesterday, solar install went so well, we yeah. thought we'd come back today and install the split relay. Yeah, so the split relay is basically a cable that runs from your van battery to your leisure battery. And what happens is when you're driving around, you're creating energy, you know, you're charging your van battery through the alternator. And when surplus energy is created, it then gets sent to your leisure battery. And this is absolutely perfect for anybody yeah. doing van life in the UK, because as you know, we There's can't no rely sun. on solar. Yeah. <laughs> so it's brilliant for that. And it's really an inexpensive piece of equipment. Yeah. It's about £80 for this as well. Yeah. And it, we would say it is an essential for mm -hmm. any van build yeah. like we would not ever not have a split charger Absolutely. so let's show you how we install it so this is where the van battery is located it's in the car bearer we're going to attach the cable to the positive on this terminal here and then run it just behind the bulkhead and then straight down the end of the van and then there's two fuses and they need to be as close to the battery the leisure battery and the van starter battery as possible <laughs> You stay there.
just going to quickly show you what I've done. So I've got the cable coming through the little battery lid. It's running under the floor here and it comes just out by the seat over there. You see that red cable? So now I'm just going to attach some conduit onto this end as it runs under the seat. Morning guys, so today we are carrying on with the split charger and we have had like minus three overnight. So everything is frozen over. It is very, very cold, especially to be doing work like the split charger where it's all fiddly and stuff, isn't it, Sam? Yeah, it's definitely a bit too cold for the hands and not have any gloves. Yeah, so I think that will be our only job for today, yeah? Just get yeah. it finished and then we're going to wrap it up. Um, tomorrow we're looking after Sam's family dog, yeah. actually, so for the rest of the weekend we're going to try and chill. just kind of chill, yeah, have it as time off and <laughs> stuff like that. Um, so, yeah. I'll pass you back over to Sam, who's doing the split charger. Yay! I know it's quite dark yesterday, so I'll give you a quick overview of what I've done. I'll have to connect in the relay to a fuse to the battery, which is all under here. It then travels under this piece of like plastic where the seats are. I've put some con conduit around the wires to protect it. And then it comes out just down here by the seat, which will run behind the bulkhead. Then it's going to come through the bulkhead, come down the kitchen it's going to sit still in front of the walls underneath the bed here and then over to here where all the electrics going to be i'm not going to wire it all up yet just because it's just going to get in the way so as you can see it goes to the last fuse which will then connect to our positive and we need to finish it off anyway guys we're going to call that a wrap on today's vlog yeah. it's going to be a really quiet ending because got chest infections so I can't talk much louder than this. Easy on this anyway, is coming thick and fast. Yeah, yeah. for me and you seem to recover really quickly <laughs> yeah. but mine just keeps going but Sam's gonna quickly update you on other Everything things we've got yeah. done on the build that we haven't filmed this week. So we had the delivery of the base units and the cable tires so we tied away all the cables in the van it's looking pretty good now. Yeah. We had a spare battery from when we upgraded to lithium in Terra we tested the circuit and everything's good there. Yeah. When we get the delivery of our batteries, we'll show you guys how to test them. Yeah, so um, what I was going to say as well, obviously I'm ill, so we think we're going to call this an end to the yeah. van build series for this year. We'll pick it back up in the new year. Um, I'm on antibiotics at the moment, so assuming they work, um, we're hopefully going to go gonna do, on yeah. a little yeah, travel yeah. trip to round up the year on YouTube. Yeah, yeah, and we've been way out of the loop in travel videos, so if you guys have actually got anywhere that you recommend... Within two hours yeah, of Shropshire... Yeah. Then we'll definitely uh, check them out. Let if us you know them. in the comments, yeah. However, if we don't get to go away on this little trip, then we want to say Merry Christmas and Happy New Year to you all. And thank you everybody for supporting the channel and yeah. just being there and commenting. Thank you, everybody. Yeah, and we know that YouTube's not always the easiest place to like keep in touch. Yeah. So um, we are over on Instagram if you guys want to catch up over the Christmas season. We know it can be like yeah. a lonely time or, you know, especially in a van, it can be quite lonely, but we're, we're still around. We're Absolutely. just not going to be uploading videos necessarily. So make sure you say hello or whatever. Come across um, for a chat. Nick yeah. loves to chat. I do love to chat. That's why I was like, I want to be in the outro still. I don't care if I'm <laughs> struggling to talk. After this, I'll have a cough and fit and go back to bed. But Put you in your cough. So, I think... <laughs> <laughs> we'll wrap that up there. Yeah. And obviously, guys, if you've enjoyed the vlog, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, yeah. and turn on those notifications. Yeah, and we'll either catch you on the travel vlog or um, in the new year. Ciao. Ciao. <laughs> Sam. Sam, do you want to give him a little Christmas dance? I don't. That's one for the Christmas party. <laughs> yeah, it's good to know. I'm sure they'll appreciate that, but at the Christmas party, they might. Monkey.